An alarming example of the growing firepower on the streets of the Bay Area. This video from Hayward Police shows a violent shootout in the city last year. Police around the Bay Area say there's been an epidemic of gun violence. Many agencies report an increase in the confiscation of high-powered weapons, and it isn't just in the big cities, but the smaller ones as well. Yeah, that's right. Our ABC 7 News insider Phil Matier has been talking with local law enforcement agencies to see what they're finding and feel what they uh, need the police to stop this. It's absolutely frightening, Dan. The chief of police in Hayward knows what it's like to work in a big city. He worked on the streets of San Francisco. He also has worked in the to suburban towns like Hayward, where guns and big guns are becoming a real, real problem. The solution to augment big, small, and often deadly consequences. These guns are deadly. In the old days, just uh, 15 to 20 years ago, those guns were small. Today, they are powerful as the soldiers carrying guns into war. Only in this war is on our city streets. Chief, when did you start out in policing? 1990. Where? San Francisco. Well, 1990, San Francisco was seeing a surge in violence. What kind of guns were you seeing then? We were seeing a lot of shotguns and a lot of handguns, just like this, a revolver. Um, and coincidentally, this was the first weapon I was issued in the police academy. But now this is what you're taking off the streets. Yes, that's correct. It's quite a leap from, you know, the old six-shooter to this. Absolutely. You'd be reloading with this thing several times before whoever was holding this weapon had to reload once. And what are these weapons now being used for? Basically to hunt and kill other people. Hayward Police Chief Tony Chaplin has seen it all in his more than 30 years of police work, but nothing like the firepower he's seeing now on the streets of the Bay Area. All of these guns and these bullet magazines were taken from people who should not have had them in this community. Well, tell me what you're finding on the streets these days. Well, uh, as evidenced by what's sitting on this table in front of you, um, the assault rifles, you know, um, they fire these massive rounds. And take a look at this thing, Phil. This is a 100-round um, drum, and uh, this thing feeds in, and you have rounds just circling through and firing. I mean, you can sit there and fire for probably a good minute or two before you have to reload this thing. Now, how many of these are legal? Well, technically all of them are. <laughs> really? All of these here you could buy in a store? Yes. All right. So, and the magazines, are they legal too? Unfortunately, they are now. Okay. So when we talk about gun control, all of this is legal? Yes. These types of guns were illegal until 2004. That's when the federal assault rifle ban expired. Attempts to renew the legislation have repeatedly failed to make their way through Congress. As a result... Today, they can be found on the streets all around the Bay Area. Okay, if they had an assault weapons ban, would these be banned? Yes. This looks more like a military operation than some random shooting. This is why police want to get these guns off the streets. How many were fired? Over 100. Over 100? Yes. Hayward police are still looking for the gunmen that were caught on this video at a local recording studio. The chief agrees that there needs to be more done to keep guns out of the hands of people like this. But he says those that do have the guns and use them against other people need to be locked up. But for crimes like you just witnessed here, um, you have to remove folks like this from the community. Over 100 rounds fired. You saw how many people Phil ran out of this place, and several of them limped out. Some was some some of the folks were carried out. Um, there was no there was no thought of women or children being in this establishment. The only thought was I'm going to kill my target. But assault rifles are not the only weapons police are looking for and confiscating. Ghost guns, homemade firearms, some from kits that are completely untraceable, have become the new gun of choice. In other words, if you're a child or a uh, convicted felon who's a prohibited person, um, you can order these kits and you can make these guns in your home. And they have no serial numbers? None. They, uh, they're referred to as unserialized weapons because there's no serial number anywhere on this weapon. And that just goes out on the street? Correct. How much would something like this go for out of a garage? Anywhere from three to eight hundred dollars, depending on what city you're in. We seized a lot of guns last year. We're seizing a lot of guns this year. Um, but our ghost guns, again, we started off in 2019, it was about 3% of our seizures. Last year in 2020, it was about 13%. This year, we're tracking at about 16% year to date um, for ghost guns being part of our seizures. This, to me, is part of 
the biggest issue we're facing right now. Chief Chaplin says his officers work hard to keep these guns out of the hands of criminals and parolees or people that are not supposed to have them. So what usually happens? Well, what usually happens, um, we'll arrest the person for the gun, and unfortunately, sometimes they beat us home for dinner. They're out of jail by the time you get home? Correct. It depends on what, what the Why? Is. If we're talking so much about getting these and the people that use these off the streets, the gun's confiscated, but the person that bought it and could go out and get another one is just let off until they come up for court date, right? That's correct. So how does that take it off the streets? Well, the weapons sitting in front of you, they're in our gun locker. So this weapon is off the streets for all intents and purposes. Um, but again, to your point, it does not prohibit or stop the person from acquiring another weapon. The chief also says that taking the guns away doesn't take away the intentions of the person who had the weapon in the first place. And that many times, the intended target is not the person shot, but rather innocent bystanders caught in the middle. You hear across our county and other counties, uh, some poor unsuspecting man, uh, I think just, uh, just uh, north of here, walking out to get his mail, stray bullet hit him in the head and killed him in front of his family. Okay, so we've got this. This is the problem. It's grown from six shooters to machine guns. Correct. How do we get them off the streets? We hear everybody talking about the need to get these out of the hands of criminals and off the streets. How do we do it? Well, that's the age-old question. Uh, first and foremost, um, you have to allow us to do our job. And then the second piece is we have to have our legislators tighten this thing up and start making these serious crimes because they're leading to uh, catastrophic issues in our communities. We're losing a lot of our young folks to gun violence because these things are all over our streets right now. Well, so far, we haven't seen many laws that are aimed at those guns on the table. What we're seeing so far is if you buy a gun, more background checks or waiting period or not being able to buy one or more. But the fact is you can cross a state line and buy them. There's straw people that buy them. So the question it becomes like, okay, how do we get them off the streets? That's the question, not whether or not we control the legal buying of guns because those aren't the people out there doing the shooting. Like I said, ghost guns, there's so many ways guns are getting onto the streets. Yeah, certainly eye-opening. And to see them all lined up visually yeah, like that right. was really an eye-opener. You know, Phil, before you leave us, we hear so much about these deadly shootings. Mm -hmm. What about the other shootings mm -hmm. where other kinds of pain are inflicted? You know, this can alter a, life, a person's life forever, mm -hmm. and it doesn't make the news. Okay, a stray bullet enters your, your stomach and, and you could be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. I'm going to give you a little statistic. This is a scary one. Mm. To date, Highland Hospital in Al Al Oakland, 254 people have been treated for gunshot wounds. That's an average of 50 a month. Wow. Oh, my God. 50 a month. And many of them are women. They're starting to see young women come in. If that's not scary... There were 284 incidents in Oakland of loan mm. of shots being fired into occupied homes mm -hmm. or occupied cars. And to your point, the fatalities often make the news, but these other shootings, people wounded, lives changed in various ways, don't get the headlines. What do authorities say truly is the way to, from their perspective, get these guns off the street. They Canada. say that we need to enforce the laws we have now, but we are unwilling at this point to put people behind bars for a number of social, political, and ju fair justice reasons. We don't want to, unless it's a violent crime. And Dan, until you use one of these guns on someone else, mm. possession is not a violent crime. Mm. Interesting. All right. Complicated problem. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, Bill, very much.